Hi everybody, old guy here. Have you ever read a book that you were enjoying so much that you simply didn't want it to end? This happened to me with the first Ian Pears novel that I read called The Instance of the Finger Post. And it happened to me again with this one. This one. The Dream of Scipio is a manuscript written in the 5th century AD by Menelaus, the Bishop of Vaison in Provence. Derived from the teachings of his great friend and teacher, the Alexandrian philosopher Sophia, who somehow becomes a saint. Olivier de Noyen, uh, an obsessed ancient manuscript collector in the 14th century, finds a bad copy of it and places it with some of his poems, both of which are found by shell-shocked World War I veteran Julian in the Vatican archives. Now, all of this happens in Provence, near the uh, city of Avignon, but the center of everything is the small town of Vaison, which in Manelaus's time is uh, an important place and nothing but a ruined backwater by the time Julian shows up. All three periods involve lovers making terrible choices. Uh, in the face of even more terrible events, such as the fall of Rome, the Black Death, and the German invasion of France. All three of our heroes make decisions that ultimately destroy themselves, their lovers, their families, and their histories. They completely disappear just a whiff of them remaining in the archives. That is the great central tragedy of this novel. That well-meaning and well-intentioned and downright effective people disappear, fade, are forgotten. While we look at history uh, as grand currents of events and action, the tide itself uh, is made up of these vanished people. For every hero we know, there's a million we don't. We know Clement V, but we have no idea that Olivier de Noyen made him successful by betraying his own patron, Bishop Sicani, in an effort to save his Jewish girlfriend and her father. The other protagonists make a similar decision in their own times. Menelaus professes a false conversion to Christianity and manipulates his way into the bishopric so he can make a deal with the Burgundians to save Provence at the expense of his best friend Felix, destroying Felix and his entire family and earning the opprobrium of Sophia, who tells him he has learned nothing of the virtues she was teaching. Olivier suffers a gruesome fate at the hands of an aristocrat who murdered his own wife and then blamed, it on, blamed the Jews for it. Olivier, having witnessed the murder and using it to forestall the pogrom and rescue his beloved. And Julian, who betrays his best friend in the French resistance, Bernard, to his best friend in the Vichy government, Marcel hoping to use information to gain the release of his Jewish girlfriend who has been rounded up for deportation. Piers bounces back and forth between the three periods with little warning, sometimes in the same paragraph, but you will have no trouble following the narrative. Uh, it's the ideas that link everything together, and, and it's actually an excellent way to see what all three persons feel uh, about the same thing or the same events, separated, of course, by their hundreds of years. And Piers' writing is a delight. 
intellectual and elegant, and man, what a treat to bounce around the centuries with him. Laid over all of these centuries is uh, Sophia's simple Platonist ideal of virtue and action, along with a Christian heresy of the soul flowing back to God in a timeless river of truth. All three of the heroes fail both the ideal and the heresy, choosing expediency and their own concerns over what all three know to be correct behavior. Which is the story of history, isn't it? Old guy here. See you later.